And, well, when he mm. and he shoots you know, that he shoots stuff, stuff, stuff that glows, oh, right? Yeah. The lightning That's thing. True. You mm-hmm. like that? That was my Godzilla. Um, <laughs> 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 sounded like a mad like a cat. cat. <laughs> yeah, I'm not sure about that. Uh, <laughs> Catra. Inspired by the adventures of our nurses, therapists, and techs, A Beer with Atlas is the only healthcare traveling, craft beer drinking podcast. Each week, we'll open a few beers, talk about the brewery and the style of beer, and then dive into some research curated specifically for each episode. In the end, we hope each one sounds like a conversation you'd have with your friends while enjoying a few cold ones. Welcome to another episode of A Beer with Atlas. I'm Rich. I'm Brian. I'm Dolan. We have two Brians on this week. That's true. Uh, I'm, you know what? I'm going to let Dolan intro this because this is near and dear to his heart. Uh, I mean, Brian's a musician too, obviously, uh, but our Brian here is a musician too. But uh, Dolan, go through kind of how this came about and, and what we're doing today. Honestly, um, it, it just came in like a normal normal work day, mm-hmm. sat down. I got an email from uh, Alec, I believe his name is, Correct. Yeah, and he's uh, from Mercat Management, I believe. Okay. Um, and it was something like, "Hey, we're doing this beer in collab with this uh, with Stealing Oceans. Um, it's all about how beer and, and music come together." And it's like they had this long email write up, and mm-hmm. so I was like, "Okay, this is kind of cool." But we get like cold emails like this all the time. Right. Like, so I did a little bit of research, found out like, "Oh, these guys are legit." <laughs> and <laughs> as a as a musician myself, I'm like I've I've done the whole like self promo thing. Um, it's hard, and so I kind of felt like we had to do this. We had to, and I, and this was the perfect platform absolutely to have them on and everything. And I mean, we'll dive more into the the beer and how it was brewed and stuff. Uh, Brian is. Brian stealing oceans, yeah. right? Is probably way more knowledgeable about that side of it than, yeah. than I am. Yeah. So Brian, why don't you? I'll I'll, I'll give you the introduction here too. Brian Thompson, uh, stealing oceans. Uh, you give me give me a little bit about this beer, where this idea came from, and then kind of how it evolved. Yeah, of course. Well, first off, guys, thanks for having me. I truly appreciate it. Love the podcast. Um, so the beer, it's been kind of a journey. How this all came about. Uh, The song itself was written back in 2018 and sat on it for a while. And from there, ended up uh, meeting Scott Avett from the Avett Brothers, who's been one of my favorite songwriters for years. And I ended up asking him to hop on the song. And from there, you know, I was like, wow, we have something really special. But uh, as Dolan probably knows, the music business these days you know, promotion and music is really hard and, you know, people pay for playlisting and it's just hard to get your music in front of people. Um, so I was like, man, I want to do something different. And at the time during COVID when, uh, you know, we, we were off the road and couldn't tour, we started a, a podcast show called Lobster and Beer TV. And so we, we gained all these relationships with beer companies and one being Shipyard Brewery in Maine. And so I approached them. I was like, hey, I'd love to, you know, create a beer based off the song that I have. And then from there, you know, I found this, um, I found this study called the Brussels Beer Project, where they basically matched uh, the visual identity of a beer to the sound landscape of a song by this British rock band. And then they tested it with three groups of like, uh, like 75 people in each group. And one group just had the beer with no label. One group had the beer with the label. And then the last group had the beer with the label and the song and the results, you know, all pointed towards there was a multi-sensory experience when someone had the label, the taste of the beer and the song playing at the same time. And uh, that really interested me. So I was like, man, what if we took that a a step further and, you know, had the beer match this, you know, more of the sonic landscape of the song rather than just the, the artwork itself. And so my producer, Schmarks, he has a, a rare thing called synesthesia where he can see color colors yeah. when he listens to music. Yeah. That's a thing. That's a oh, real yeah. thing. It's real. Really? It's incredible. Yeah. It's wow. so cool. I wish I had it. Yeah. I wish I had it. So when he, when he listened to the song, he saw the, the dark purples, the blues, the lighter blues and the yellows. And so we're like, okay, cool. That's the color palette we'll roll with. And then from there, we're like, all right, let's, let's work with Shipyard to, to formulate a beer that kind of matches that. 
and also kind of complements the the sonic landscape of the song. And that's where we we tested a bunch of different flavors, but we landed on this blueberry ale that really really matched the the landscape of the song. Was the testing of the flavors part real terrible? <laughs> <laughs> I'm guessing no. Oh, that, that's so much. Speaking work. of flavors, I'm going to go ahead and open mine. Let's do okay. So let's do this it here. Brian, can we listen to the song? Can we actually do this and listen to the song while we drink the beer? Can we do that together? Of that'd, course, man. That would be awesome. Dolan. <laughs> yeah, I'm pulling it up right yeah, now. Yeah, that'd be great. I can't believe that people can see colors. Yeah. that's Sometimes if I drink too much coffee, right? I mean, that's... Coffee, yeah. <laughs> that's one thing you can... It's not the same thing. Drink too much of. Ooh, it's that's the nice. Thing. The blueberry smell of this is off the charts good. That's, yeah. Oh, the, it just, it's right there. Yeah, it hits you right when you open the can. It's nice. Yeah, I can feel your energy. I get the same high when I'm tripping. I want to grab you and slide into a rhythm. Because I feel so... That keyboard sound, where does yeah, that come is, from? Yeah, with that keyboard sound at the beginning. It sounded, like a, it sounded like a Rhodes or something like that piano. Yeah, that's uh, his name's Kip Wild. So he uh, he was playing just a patch on his uh, his keyboard. Got it. Oh, that's cool. So, did, did you have a, a ton of studio musicians in when you did this, or how did the how did the process of recording the song go? Yeah, at the time, um, I was touring with a, a five piece band with me, and uh, we were in LA for a couple shows, and we went to the studio, and Kip, the keyboard player, Kip Wild had this this initial idea and we just all hopped on it uh worked with schmarks and savvy producers and writers who uh were from uh, la and uh yeah it kind of all just came together in the studio that day and then from there uh you know we added different players on it uh one of them being i don't know if you guys ever heard of the rock band greta van fleet but oh yeah sit Sam Kizka from Greta uh, plays the organ and guitar solo in it, um, and then you got Pat, Pat, uh, Pat Graves on bass, David Martin and Sean Bennett both play drums, Ryan Swinehart on saxophone, and Sam Woods on guitar. Awesome. What's your connection with uh, with Sam from Greta? They're they're kind of cool group there. Yeah, they're killer, man. They're such a good band. We uh we became friends about two three years ago in LA and uh yeah just you know I think we met at like a party one time and just really geeked out on music and since then became really close and he's uh such a good dude man he's got the biggest heart and it was awesome for him to hop on this song that's cool here's here's a question I did a little research last night Mm -hmm. and this is what piqued my interest and it's why Scott Avett yeah. Right. I mean, like, what, I, mean from, I, I wrote that down. Too. I'm, I'm a huge, huge Ava Brothers fan. Yes. Like, the biggest that I know. I've seen him probably almost 30 times in concert. Right. So, when his voice comes on, I, I could hear that when I was asleep. I would know that was was him. I know he's a huge visual artist. He's an amazing painter. Amazing painter. Um, and I'm just wondering, what is it about him that drew you into it? And how did that that collaboration process go? Mm-hmm. Yeah, it uh, it goes back to 2019. We played a festival with the Avid Brothers in uh, Dallas. And to backtrack actually before that, I, I went through a really hard time uh, a couple years before that bad breakup. Uh, ended up getting sober for four years. I went on my first bus tour and just basically went against all my morals and uh, got in a really tough spot in my life. And I was like, you know, I need to make a big change. So I stopped drinking for four years. And I listen to the Avid Brothers almost every day. Their music, just as you know, uh, you know, no hard feelings. That song about dying and just not having any enemies that that resonated with me so well. And all oh, their the whole catalog resonated with me. So, you know, they became my favorite band. And uh, when we were playing Kaboo Dallas, I knew they were there. And I uh, I had a relationship with the artist liaison who ran the meet and greets backstage. And he was like, Hey, the Avids are back here. If you want to come say what's up. And so I went back. And I just got a couple minutes with Scott and I just said, hey man, you know, as cliche as it sounds, like your music really did change my life in such a positive way. And it's truly an honor to meet you. And really that was the gist of the conversation. And then about a month later, my manager got an email from his manager saying, hey, Scott really enjoyed meeting Brian. He'd love to get in contact with him. 
And so from there, he emailed me. You know, we went back and forth a bunch. I went and I was in the studio by Jimmy Kimmel, and they were playing there. So I went and hung out with them there. And we hung out a few more times. And then I was sitting on this song, and I was like, you know what? I'm just gonna take the chance, man. I'm gonna ask God if He wants to sing on it. And He said yes. And honestly, a dream come true, man. I never, I never thought I'd be in this position to have a song with one of my idols, and then on top of that, have the beer. So it's, um, I'm just grateful for all of it, to be honest. That's a that's a cool story. That is awesome. That is an, man. Yeah, that's awesome, man. The fact that he remembered you after that, right? And then you came back around to Incredible. that. Yeah. Yeah. That's it's awesome. a testament. It's a testament to how big his heart is, man. Nice. Well, and I'm Dylan, glad, I'm oh, glad, I was going to say. I was going to say, I, I'm, I'm glad it happened because this beer is really good. This beer good. Yeah. is really good. <laughs> it's a nice <laughs> yes. tied, you know, everything tied up in a nice bow here. Yeah. I was going to say it's cool. Um, and Dylan knows this too. When you have a chance to meet somebody that you've, put so much time and listening to and like putting into yourself you know and all that music how it affects you it's so cool to actually get to meet somebody and tell them that to their face right right yeah and then it also feels pretty cool on the flip side when you have people tell you that or you're playing a show and there's people singing along to your song that you wrote there's nothing better than that mm -hmm. for sure except maybe this beer <laughs> what is that, <laughs> what is that? Brian, what does that feel like? Which like, one? Him? When, this guy? Ask this him, guy? Yeah. yeah. Well, I mean, you perform too, obviously, but kind of. Brian, what does that? What does that feel like when you're on stage and, and people are? When you look out and people are singing the words back to you, right? They're, they, it, it, that's got to just be un. I, I have no musical talent in me <laughs> whatsoever, but I love music so much. That's got to be an amazing feeling. Yeah, I mean, it's it's hard to believe when it first starts to happen that people actually you know because as a kid you just you, you fall in love with music and then you know you're like oh like I, I would love to be a star someday or whatever and you have these big dreams and all of a sudden you know if you're lucky enough it starts to actually happen and it's hard to put it into words like it, it's just it, it fills your your heart and your soul like you're like wow like they, they're actually resonating with something that you know a lot of my music is stories about the struggles I've had in my life and heartbreaks or you know whatever it is struggles with drugs and alcohol and to have people connect with that and even come up to the merch booth after and say, Hey, like your music helped me get through this certain situation or at certain points helped me get sober. I mean, it's, there's nothing that relates to that. And to me, it's like, you know, I, I think uh, one of the things that, that really I hold close is the idea of, you know, when I'm 70, 80 years old, not having any regret in my life and looking back and knowing that, you know, I, I made the world a better place and to know that, just my music something i'm passionate about is doing that itself is it's uh it's super fulfilling and i'm, I'm very grateful for it talk about your, some of your influences we've, we've mentioned avid brothers just for for that but what what else is uh what's ticking inside of you like what what made you think you could do this yeah uh well i, I grew up with like an eclectic background in music my parents were into the oldies uh grew up right outside of boston so oldies 103.3 was always on the radio in our Dodge Caravan with the wooden paneling on the nice, side. Nice, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, you know, like Beatles, Beach Boys, you know, the Stones, uh, all that type, the Temptations, mm -hmm. like, oh, man, that stuff moves my heart. And then one one of my old, I have two older brothers, they're eight and ten years older than me, and one of them was really into hip-hop. And so back then it was like, you know, LL Cool J, Snoop Dogg, Dre. And then my other brother was really into rock, uh, Porno for Pyros, Smashing Pumpkins, Stone Temple Pilots. Yeah. You're speaking our language yeah. now. It's yes. so awesome that it's so awesome you went Porno for Pyros first and then you went into the others. That's I didn't awesome. even go Jane's, Jane's Addiction. No, that's, that's all right. We like that. Oh, Jane's Addiction. Yeah, yeah. yeah absolutely. I Perry think Porno Farrell. for Pyros, I think Porno for Pyros comes out first just because as like a 12 year old, you see porno on a. Oh, of course. Album. Yeah. yeah. Ding, ding. I'm there. So cool. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that, that album cover was great. Yeah, Perry Farrell is. Yeah, He's a the, genius. The dude is just yeah. a genius. And yeah, everything he does, it seems like everything he touched was, was awesome. All right. One other question I had from my research I did. I did some uh, scrolling, you know, as, as we do on the socials. Um, I think I saw a picture of you with a Dookie shirt on. Mm. Mm. <laughs> so a, what's your what's your go to a, track? It was a Dookie. green day. It was a green day shirt. Yeah. I saw the same one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's funny. I'm I'm a big. Uh, what's that song called? She. She. I love that song. That was that that's was my favorite. I loved that one. Yeah. Oh, that's a great tune. Yeah, that was one of the first uh, one of the first CDs when I was younger. It was like that and Rage Against the Machine that 
you know, I was like probably 13, 12, 13 years old. And I wasn't allowed to listen to, <laughs> you know, the explicit music. So mm, I had to like, sure. sneak, sneak in my brother's room and just throw it on the CD player and, and bump it. And so that, that was one of the first ones. And I had always, always been a Green Day fan. I had the soundtrack to Natural Born Killers hidden under my bed because I wasn't allowed to, to have that one. Yeah. So some people hide, you know, magazines or whatever under the bed. I had my CDs. Music. Yeah. Well, I've told this story. <laughs> I've told this story on the podcast before. Uh, when I was 10 years old, my parents ran a movie theater. And when I was 10 years old, my dad ran Purple Rain. And mm. I fell in love with Prince and music, his music. Sure. And, man, I wanted that. I wanted that tape so damn bad. And we went to uh, the TGNY. And I finally talked him into buying it for me and took it home. And my mom was like, I don't know. You can listen to every song on here except the last song on the second side. Which was Darling Nikki. Darling Nikki, yeah. What's the first thing I did when my parents left? Oh, you flipped the tape over? <laughs> I got on my bike. I ran. I, I went down to Lance Miller's house, and I'm like, dude, we got to listen to this song. I have no idea what this means, but we got to listen to it. Yeah. No clue what it meant whatsoever. So and There's a good Foo Fighters cover of that, too. <laughs> there's a great Foo Fighters cover of that song. Oh, man. Yeah, this. Um, awesome. I just want to say, the blueberry on this. Mm -hmm. Sometimes blueberry in a beer is almost too much. This lingers in a like a super nice, fresh, like blueberry muffiny way. Yes, and I'm yeah. I'm a fan. Yeah, I'm digging this. Well, and sometimes you get that bread taste, like you said, yeah. like that muffin taste. Mm -hmm. Like they think they have to have that. No, this is just straight fruit. Okay, and that's I love it. I I think this is at at four point seven. It completely crushable. You could drink this all day. You know, <laughs> this is a pool beer. This is a concert beer. It's a concert beer. Yeah. See, where did where did your uh, where did your <laughs> like craft beer drinking passion come from? Wow. It's a great question. Um, man, that's hard to answer. I mean, I, I think probably I lived in Denver, uh, about 10, 10 years ago and they have a really good craft scene. Obviously, you know, uh, was it new Belgium's and Fort Collins? Yep. And, uh, Oh yeah. And, yeah, just the, just the experience of going to you know brewery. It, it, it reminds me of Europe, right? You sit at the long, extended picnic tables. You share tables with people, and you get to try different. You know, you go from you know a, a seven seven pointer to a nine pointer, and then you kind of trickle yeah. down to your you know like a four seven. And uh, yeah, just I, I've always fallen in love with the the art of making beer. It was so cool to be able to go to shipyard and. Um, you know, work with the the head brewmaster and, you know, get, yeah, I actually got to make beer with them and get in the vats and, you know, pour the grain and uh, just see the whole process. And, you know, I, I, I kind of nerd out on that stuff the same way with the, the sonic landscape of the song, you know, that kind of stuff really, uh, it just really piques my interest. So we've, we've done Shipyard on on the podcast before. We had their pumpkin beer a few years ago. Talk about that a little a little bit more. Like, where did that relationship come from with Shipyard? And then did how did they invite you up? We, what was that process like? Did you, you know, through the label process? Because I know there's, I, I, I'm involved with a brewery here locally, and getting the label done is a process. And, you know, those types of things. Like, there's a whole, there's a process behind the whole Just thing. naming the beer is a process. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah, so. Talk about that a little bit. Yeah. Well, first off, their whole team is amazing. Uh, I got connected, Alec and I, who I think you guys spoke to, he, he, yeah. uh, he produces our show, Lobster and Beer TV. And so that was kind of the first touching point with Shipyard, where our partner in it, Mark Merle, owns a company called Get Main Lobster, which is the number one uh, direct-to-consumer seafood shipping company in the country. The, the, the Shark Tank guys, right? It was Shark Tank. Wasn't it? No, that was. Oh. Uh, I think that was at Cousins. No, the that lobster was trucks. Look at me trying to be smart here. Anyway, <laughs> <laughs> sorry about that. Please continue. Oh, it's all given. Yeah, no. So I, I've known Mark, the the owner of GML, for years, and uh, you know we've collaborated on a bunch of stuff with music over the years. And when when COVID hit and I couldn't be on the road, you know we we pivoted to starting the the pod and you know, he supplies fresh lobster rolls to all our guests. And from there, you know, we're like, we need a beer partner. And he had a good relationship with Bruce Forsley, the president of Shipyard. And so he connected us with Bruce. And, you know, right off the bat, we hit it off. Uh, just incredible guy, uh, big heart, loves music. And so we worked together just in the capacity of them, you know, being the sponsor for Lobster and Beer TV. But then I presented him the idea, or actually I sent him the song. 
And he absolutely loved it. Him and his wife, like both were, were geeking out about it. And he was like, yeah, let's figure this out. And that was over a year ago. And then it like, you know, it, it kind of fizzled out for four or five months. And then I brought it back when I found that study about the Brussels beer project. And so I went back to him about it and yeah, they invite us up to the brewery. Uh, we got to meet the whole team, got to brew beer with, you know, their head, their head brewmaster and, uh, just just incredible people i think we're going to do a lot with them in the future and nice. uh yeah hi- highly recommend drinking their all their stuff is they put like a lot of love into their beer and um, what do you guys think of the pumpkin head uh, I, well i mean they're an og in in yeah. brewing in craft brewing right they've been around since 94 yeah a long so, time yeah, that's a long time i i i think we liked it right yeah I mean, we I, did I remember, yeah for right? sure it was. It used to be in bottles. I think now they can it. They but can it now. It's one of the very few ones from the East Coast that we get here in Nebraska. Yep. So it's also one of the very first pumpkins that shows up every year. So mm-hmm. when you see that on the store shelf, you know it's time. Well, it's about right now, right? I it mean, is right now. Like right yeah. now. Yep. Yeah. yeah. When they uh, when they ship stars out to all the total wines, that was uh, combined with the first shipment of uh, pumpkin heads. Oh, nice. Do we do we have a total wines in Omaha? Yeah, we do. We do. Mm-hmm. We so need well, to go so we down can, there. I'm going to go get a lot of this. Okay. Buy some more. Yeah. Of it. <laughs> Absolutely. That thanks, sounds good. Thanks, Rich. <laughs> yeah. go. I'll support you. Yeah, one, we can do that. One four pack at a time, right That's there. That's perfect. So, <laughs> so uh, what's what's next for you? Ooh, that's a good question, man. Um, well, you know, we're going to continue to do the, the the lobster and beer TV show. We're ramping that back up. We got a lot of cool guests coming up uh we you know the song comes out on friday so super excited about that friday august 26 mm-hmm. august i'm sorry august 26 uh so by the time this is out i think the song will be out and uh from there we got a follow-up single so you know after we do the promo run for this tune we'll kind of you know switch and and head on to that tune and then uh you know playing shows college shows i do a lot of those uh in the fall and the spring and uh, hopefully making, we started a company called Musical Brews, this whole concept with the QR code and having a multi-sensory experience. So we're talking to other artists, some, some really big artists, actually, that I can't name right now. But uh, we're talking to other artists about doing the same concept, uh, creating their beer and, and kind of basically doing this for their fans where it's, you know, it's kind of a new way, like I said earlier, to promote a song. Uh, or an album or, you know, any sort of release. And uh, so we're, we're hyped about that. It's uh it's so much fun, you know, working with beer and music. It's two of my favorite passions. <laughs> that that can art is off the yeah, charts. Yeah, great. I like it a lot. Thank you, Johnny. Yeah. Johnny Kiotis, His name is Johnny Kiotis. He's a beast. Well, just the story about how you know listening to the song, they could see this color palette, like makes right. it even cooler. Yeah. And then I read something online where it was like you guys actually played the song during the brew process. Because yeah, yeah, yeah. because it, it it changes up the yeast a little bit, like yeah, the sound what? waves or whatever. Yeah. Really? Yeah. yeah, yeah. So I I found that was like another random night of you know being in my own world, and uh, I found this article about this brewery in Carolina that they made a Wu Tang beer, and it wasn't <laughs> collaboration. It wasn't a collaboration with Wu Tang. They just did it themselves. But they found they like worked with a scientist. I forget where they actually you know got the information, but they found that the the vibrations of the music in the brewing room while the beer is being made in the vats actually changes the like molecular compound of the yeast and like slightly you were talking slightly alters the flavoring. And I was like, yo, that's so cool. So we we put uh, we put speakers it. in the <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Dude, science is crazy. How yeah. loud awesome. how loud do you have to get the song? I mean, do you know? Like how long how loud do you have to play the song for it to actually affect the yeast? Turn or, it up, man. Turn right? it up. All eleven. Way. You gotta put it at eleven. <laughs> eleven. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I don't know about the certain like decibel level, but you definitely have to bump it because you have to think the vi- the vibration has to be pretty significant to get into those vats. Um, right. And as you guys know, the brewing process takes a while. So the brewer hated us because the, the song was playing. <laughs> it was playing on repeat for days, man. Oh, <laughs> oh boy. Yeah, I would. I have, yeah, that would be a lot. It's still the stuck one song. in his head. Oh, yeah. Still. It's there. <laughs> it is there. Wow. Uh, I'll tell you, every time we have conversations like this, like coming out of the pandemic, there's always there's always that silver lining, right? It, there's that magic of what happened because of the situation that we were in. Yeah. And the magic that happened because of the situation you were in, right? Not being able to tour, not being able to go on the road, 
all of that together kind of just made all of this possible. If the pandemic hadn't happened, would any of this happen? And I mean, the answer in some, in most cases is no, it wouldn't have. It was the perfect kind of puzzle pieces fit together. And then all of a sudden, look what we're doing. And this is, this is magic. Yeah. This I is, f- this is magic. I feel like there's been amazing art post, yeah. you know, the lockdown and people are kind of coming back to the world. And it was like, you know, people wouldn't have that time to sit and, yep. and work and do things and think because everything is so fast, you know? So right. um, it, it seemed to work out pretty okay for some folks. I'm, I'm digging this, man. It's a great idea. I'm going to nerd out for just one second with you here because I, I listened. So this morning when I came in, I come in earlier than anybody else because I get so much done when there's nobody around. And it, it just and so I'm listening to your music. And I, first of all, I'll tell you, Blueprint it might, might be my favorite song that you've done. I know it's like from 2017. For whatever reason, man, that song came on and I stopped what I was doing and I listened to that song. And then I went and I hit and I, I stopped I stopped the playlist and I went and listened to that song again and then listened to it again. <laughs> like your lyrics in that are awesome. I just it was just it's just awesome. And you had mentioned LL Cool J. Like there you can definitely feel the influence of someone like LL Cool J. Like the lyrics in in that song in particular. Like I, I don't know. I I wrote that down as you were talking through, you know, like who who you know influenced you and stuff? That was that was one of them. Like shit, that's that's it. Like that's what I heard there. I heard that influence there. So blueprint was that that was my favorite out of all of them. So. I'm gonna I'm gonna jump hey, on you. that. But it, I didn't I didn't like hear this influence. But I just felt the feeling that I get when I listen to this person's music. But that was atmosphere. Okay. Like dude, so I, I so I I didn't I started with like the younger days of listening to music. Sure. That's that's so funny brian like atmosphere my that is my biggest influence okay he's wow. absolutely my slug sean yeah. is in such an incredible storyteller yep. he's he is a wordsmith uh, i yeah i grew up like i mean i i when i got sent away to like boarding school i i found atmosphere and that was like one of the that was the reason why he was the reason i got into music like at my early like if you watch shows from like when i was like 18 to 21 most of my mannerisms were influenced by you know atmosphere to the point where like at the end of every atmosphere show he goes one two three piece one two Uh i do that i do that every show man because they have like continuing that trend oh that gave me goosebumps actually right there yeah that's so funny how cool music is man see like i didn't know that yeah you listen to him brian yeah yeah Wow. That's awesome you made that connection. That's, That's crazy. That's just, uh, yeah. just the feeling I got. It, wow. You know? That's awesome. Great. <laughs> All right. So let's, uh, we end every show. We do the untapped rating. So untapped is a, is a beer nerd Facebook kind of, yeah. Uh, yeah, so we can go, so we go on there. Uh, people will rank these beers. There's only 25 check-ins for this beer already. Oh, so well, that's it. But because it's so new, right? Yeah. All right. So where do we, out of five, where do we think this beer lands? Out of those ratings? Out of those, yeah. Okay. Out of the 25. Out of those ratings. I'm going to yeah. say it's a 4.52. Okay. I'm going to go, I'm going to go 4.15. Uh, Brian, where do you think this, out of five, where do you think that, on only 25 check-ins, where do you yeah. think this lands so far? Probably say like a seven. There you <laughs> go. It's a seven. It's actually pretty close. No. Uh, it's a 3.64 right now. Okay. So, but on 25 check-ins, that's. Yeah, that's, no, that's that's not very. Many. I think I would say this is probably the best blueberry beer I've had. I cannot disagree with that. And I've had a few blueberry beers I've in my had day, more but... than a few. Mm. Yeah, in fact, it, you mentioned one. New Belgium has uh-huh. a blueberry beer one time, and this is better than that. It just has that fresh, honestly. real blueberry. It doesn't have yeah. that artificial, you know, like you get say, in a seltzer or something. Yeah, the yeah. thing that, the thing that I like about this is also the tartness is not there, which is something that I don't like about just berry flavors in general. Is right. like that tart. This, yeah. it's not in there it's like shaved off yeah it's mm-hmm. shaved off it's it's fruity mm-hmm. and it's yep. it's good uh so brian thompson stealing oceans thank you so much this was awesome uh one one last time here tell everyone where they can hear the song when it comes out and and anything else about you that you want that you want people to know yeah uh well first off thank you guys for having me uh rich brian dolan it's been a pleasure I love what you guys are doing. It's uh, it's awesome. I'm a, I'm a fan of the pod. Uh, so the the song comes out August 26th, so it'll be out by the time people watch this. Uh, the beer is in pretty much all Total Wines across the country. 
Um, and outside of that, uh, one big thing that we do with Stealing Oceans and Lobster and Beer TV that, uh, you know, is near and dear to my heart because I struggle with it when I was younger is we support mental health. So if you go to my page uh, at Stealing Oceans, there's a link there to the American Foundation for Suicide Prevention. You can donate. The money goes all to the foundation. Uh, it's so important. You know, the biggest message I like to pass on to people when I play shows or have conversations like this is to all the listeners, you know, it, it's so important that we take care of ourselves because if we take care of ourselves, we put our position, we put ourselves in a position to help others. And at the end of the day, you know, we're all in this earth together. Take away all your beliefs and all that bullshit. Like we're just humans and we need to support and love each other. So my shit's always open. My DMs are always open. I love people. I love connections. So if you ever need to reach out, you're struggling, you feel alone, I'm here. And I'm sure these guys feel the same way. So uh, I, at the end, I appreciate guys. Like, thank you so much for having me. It's been awesome. I feel like you and I could be the same person except you have some talent. <laughs> and I don't, but <laughs> everything else, man, it's like, we're we're pretty much the same. I like it, man. Even I, your I, names, everything, I'm even, right? I, yeah, I'm down with what you're doing. I, I appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you, Brian. I this, was so, this was so cool. Brian, thank you so much. This was so awesome. So we end the same episode, or we end the episode in the same way every single time. It's a tribute to Brian's dad. And I say, we're not going anywhere for a while. Let's have another beer. And listen to some Stealing Oceans. That's right. Thank you, guys. I appreciate you doing your research and shit. That was, that was, that was really nice. Yeah. When the sun goes down and your fear comes out, we can just lay here, no one else around. Because it's you and I in my nightlight, staring at the stars on my ceiling. On my ceiling. Thank you again to Brian Thompson of Stealing Oceans. That was... We've never done anything like that before. Not really. We've definitely never had like a call-in visitor or someone that was Don't was so excited. <laughs> well, here's like the dudes. Have we ever talked to like a like a legit musician like that? I mean, no. the, the dude collab other than Scott Dolan. Avid. Other than Dolan, yeah. I mean, the, the dude's the guy's legit. I can't I can't talk about that that song enough that I heard that I the one that you to like the like blueprint. Times. Yeah. I, I, I kind of feel super dorky that I nerded out on it, but I hey, don't care. I mean, you know he, what? He I, wrote it. If it was me, I would like some nerding out too. But but okay. So in traditional beer with Atlas fashion, you've got some actual research. I here. do. So I went with. We always have a hard time kind of figuring out where we're gonna, what I'm gonna look up, and the information that I'm gonna do. And um, I went with "Stars on the Ceiling" because I was like, okay, that's the song, or at least the beer name, right? Mm -hmm. So we got that, and I thought, okay, those are those glow in the dark. <laughs> Stick on stars. Sure. It's like my sister had those. It was the '90s. I think everybody in the '90s had to have those. Mm -hmm. I moved into a house, uh, my first house out of my parents' house. There were some stuck to the ceiling already <laughs> when I moved in. So I was like, you uh, just left them up there. Yeah, then? Of, course. Oh, of course, dude. Yeah, it was... I actually, I actually had a ton of those, um, and I had like different shapes too, not just stars. I'm glad that you Ooh. brought that up. Yeah. So here's what I got for us. I just did some a quick cursory search. And I found this company called Glodio, which is start for Glow Studio. Glodio. Yeah, Glodio. Glodio. Okay. And they make this thing there that are called star orbs. So yeah. more lifelike star designs, not the what a kid would draw mm. in fourth grade star. Like a five pointed star. Uh -huh, it's not that. No. It's more like what you see in the night sky. Sure. And I was like, okay, let me see what this is all about. Cause you know, it's been about 20 something years since I was into the uh, stars on the ceiling game. Mm -hmm. You know, I haven't, I haven't had that uh, recently. And they had a little website. They had a video on YouTube. Um, I will say your product looks great, Glodio. I know for a fact Dolan could have made a better video. Oh. Hmm. I, Cause I've seen his, you know, extended demos. Uh, I know yeah. what he can do. Yeah, 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 yeah. Um, but this thing looks cool. Especially if you're uh, have a kid or something. Um, they glow for 10 to 12 hours. Okay. Put them on the ceiling, right? Mm -hmm. um, you charge them for 10 minutes. That seems like pretty good. So 10 minutes before your kid goes to bed or you go to bed, right. you turn on your bedroom light, 10 minutes. Charge them. For 12 hours almost. Wow. The first hour says they're pretty bright and then they'll gradually fade out and dim, which is true with the night sky. Of course, right? yeah. Um, people were like, one of the questions on the website was, is this gonna keep kids awake? They're like, actually, no. And in mm -hmm. fact, they want to go to bed because they get to see this thing on the, on the ceiling. Mm -hmm. um, they take about 30 minutes to put them up for the first time. It basically just peeling stick stickers is mm -hmm. what they look like. Um, 
they don't come off very well. They said, basically, if you're mm. going to do this, you're going to commit to it, yeah. uh, if, especially if you have a textured ceiling, which most places don't anymore, at least new designs. No. Yeah. But if you've got the old popcorn ceiling, you can put them on there. Matt but Lawhorn. Yeah, exactly. But they're <laughs> yeah. going to stay on there, right? Mm -hmm. And they also had this thing that was kind of cool because people were like, well, how many do I need? How, how many should I buy? Um, they have an estimator tool. So you do your measurements of your room size, mm -hmm. and they'll be like, all right, this will do what you need. Oh. Give you X amount, right? Okay. So then the rest of this stuff, glow in the dark, the stars, kind of like magnets, Dolan. How does it work? <laughs> <laughs> no, that is not the, the, the line of lyrics that I want in oh, this episode. Sorry. <laughs> well, wow. that's what I knew. <laughs> There's four different basically varieties of glow in the dark. There's photoluminescence, and these are words that are big to say and hard to spell, and I've had one beer. So here we go. <laughs> Photoluminescence. It is the emission of light from a molecule or atom that has absorbed electromagnetic, electromagnetic energy, which is um, what you're seeing on those glow-in-the-dark stars. Okay. Right? So that's it's charged, it holds it, and then it lets it go. Bioluminescence. Guess what? Bio, that's real. That's living stuff. That's living light, tissue, right? Light yeah. emitted by living organisms mm. using an inter internal chemical reaction. So underwater sea things, lightning bugs, glow worms, that sort of thing. Hmm. Chemiluminescence, emission of light without giving off heat. That's the key. Oh. So there's no heat transfer. Mm -hmm. Like glow sticks. Exactly. Mm. That's what it is. Oh. Chemical reactions, glow sticks. And Good then call. there's the last one is radioluminescence, which is basically something that just got blasted with some radiation. Like the Hulk. Yeah. <laughs> or She-Hulk in this she case. She-Hulk, yeah. uh, attorney at law or whatever she so is. So mm -hmm. the Hulk should be glowing. Godzilla should be glowing. <sighs> Technically, it was gamma rays on the Hulk. They always, oh. for some sort of weird ray. Yeah. It was never, yeah, it was never radiation. Yeah. Probably because, you know, that was I a threat. God Godzilla was radiation. Probably that. Yeah, maybe. Maybe Japan. Well, when mm. he, and he, he shoots, you know, that he shoots stuff, the stuff that glows, oh, right? Yeah. The lightning so thing. True. You mm -hmm. like that? That was my Godzilla. Um, <laughs> <laughs> sounded like a mad like a cat. cat. Yeah, I'm not sure about that. Uh, <laughs> Catra. Um, they have this thing. I was looking on the website last night. Taiwanese scientists have claimed that they have bred or created glow-in-the-dark pigs. Really? And I did not see any footage of this, huh. but it could be done. So you could have glow-in-the-dark bacon. Yes, wow. <laughs> but then maybe it would glow in your stomach when you mm. ate it. I don't know. It would have glow when you pooped it out then, too. It could. Mm. Sometimes it does that anyway. It's for good radio right there. Uh, first <laughs> written documentation of glow-in-the-dark phenomena, 1000 BC. And we're, this is in China. Okay. So they're like, hey, there's these things that fly at night, and uh, they light up, and that's weird. Fireflies. Right? Yeah. yeah. But they didn't know what the hell was going on. Mm. But that's a long time ago. Yeah. 1602. This is um, in Italy. In Bologna, not Bologna, but Bologna, mm -hmm. Vincenzo, that sounds legit, right? Yeah. Cass Ciacorla discovered the Bolognian stones. I didn't know what that was. I had to mm. look it up. Basically, they sucked in sunlight, and whatever was the chemical in this rock um, at night would glow out. And it would look like it was almost like a path, like it had come out of a volcano or something. Yeah. So at night, it was like a pathway up this oh. hill because of this rock with a certain chemical in the stone glowed at night. Like in Temple of Doom, the Shankari yeah, stones? Right? Yeah, those stones. Is yeah. that right? Was that right? Well, something like that. I just pulled that out. With I, the three, they look like eggs? Yeah, 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 yeah. Um, 1669, phosphorus, heard of that? Yep, yep. That was first isolated. That's a glow in the dark thing. Mm -hmm. By a German alchemist. So 1669, that's what, 500 years ago almost, 450? It was a long time ago. Um, you know what an alchemist is? You, that turns metal into gold? Yes. Turns iron? Yes. Or, uh, yeah, 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 trying to make lead. gold. Yeah. Turns lead into gold. That's who it was. A really? German dude named Henning Brand. And then last thing about this, uh, Dolan hit on it earlier. He must be a fan of the rave and or glow stick. December of <laughs> 1977, Richard Taylor Van Zant. No relation that I could I find to Towns Van Zandt. I was going to ask. First person to get a patent and or to add this steel ball inside of a plastic tube. Okay. That when you shook the ball, the steel broke and it opened the chemical and started the reaction. Yep. And that's what made glow sticks. Now, nowadays, you just crack them. You just crack them. And it yep. does it the same thing. 77? Yeah. I guess that's about right. So, yeah, that's you know, right. disco times were happening yep. and, you know, the raver scene was... Mm -hmm. soon to come and 
all thanks to Richard Taylor Van Zant with his glow stick. Sure. And that's what I got for us on Glow in the Dark and Stars on the Ceiling. Stars on the Ceiling. Yep. Man. Wow. Counting all the stars on my ceiling. On my ceiling. So can we visit? Hop in a spaceship. See in the nighttime. In the day shift. Cause I got the patience. And I want to take you there. It's a couple of light years. But I bet we can make it. All right, let's talk about this bonus beer. So bonus beer, uh, sunny little thing from Sierra Nevada. Citrus I wanted, wheat. I wanted to bring something that was in the same vein as what we were going to have. Totally the same. Right, yeah. style-wise. Very, very similar. sweet beer. But this is, whereas Brian was talking about where he could get, or we can get the beers in a you know limited place, this is pretty much everywhere. Everywhere. And that's one of the reasons I never really had it, because I see it everywhere. I was like, okay, well, then I was like, I do like hazy little thing, mm-hmm. and I like the the hazy big thing. Have you ever had that one? No, huh? That's like their West their... Coast Imperial. Oh. It's like a nine and a half percenter. Yikes. Then they have a fruited one. Like, I think it's wild little thing or it's something like that. And then this was sunny. So I was like, all right, we'll give it a shot. This is, this much like Stars on the Ceiling, this is a pool beer, mm-hmm. outside beer, after lawn mowing beer, all it day It smells long. just like, to me, straight citrus. Citrus, fruit. like oranges, Orange lemons. Zest. Yeah, that's exactly what it smells like. <laughs> oh, it's it's just bright. I don't even know how to. It's bright. It it has more aftertaste than the stars on the ceiling beer. Mm-hmm. Right, like it it hits faster and it kind of hangs there more. It's more. I don't know. I don't want to say pungent, but it's it's sharper. Sure. It, would that be the wheat ale? Would that be the wheat coming through rather than just the citrus? Maybe, maybe over the is. over the blueberry. I think the blueberry maybe. was more muted, and that's why we liked it so much. Yeah, it, it tastes like it tastes like the uh, cheap, like two dollar fifty cent, like big bag of popsicles. It tastes like the orange one. Mm. You know oh. what I'm talking about? Mm-hmm. It, yeah, I know it what just you're tastes about. the dum dums. No, 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 no. Oh, um, popsicles like the ices or whatever. Oh. Yeah, they come. They come in that like, mm-hmm. what is it like a mesh bag or whatever? Yeah, it's yeah. like a glow stick sucker or yep. lollipop. Exactly, yeah. but it's a popsicle. Mm-hmm. That's kind of what it reminds mm-hmm. me of. It's. I mean, if you like that orange, mm-hmm. that's exactly it's, what it is. It's right there, man. That's absolutely yeah. what it is. Tangerine, maybe even. I don't know. Mm-hmm. I think, you know, I think. Um, if I had the choice between the two, I mean, if I was handed either one of these beers, I'd drink them both. Right? So happy. Yeah. Yeah. And ask for another one. I'd probably still go with the blueberry one, though. I, I would, would, too. I would, too. Yeah. Yeah, quite honestly. It's just more mellow and muted for me. This one's just up in your face. And it, yep. I'm, mm-hmm. I'm in not a huge orange juice person. Like at breakfast, I'll have just a tiny little bit. So that's enough for me. Uh, that's the way it is for me, too. If I have the choice between orange juice or apple juice, mm-hmm. it's always apple juice. Mm-hmm. You know, like... Interesting. You know when you get the, like, the free hotel breakfast? Oh, mm-hmm. yeah. And you have the choice between orange juice, water, milk, and apple juice? Mm-hmm. Apple juice. Apple juice. Yep. Wow. And I don't even drink juice. What about know? grape juice? Does anybody drink grape juice? Grape juice mm. doesn't do well in my stomach. Oh, yeah. No. Does Ooh. wine? Wine's fine. Wine's fine. So it's the mm, alcohol it's, that's the helper? It, it, the alcohol helps. Yeah. yeah, for sure. I don't know. That's <laughs> how I feel about things. Science. Alcohol well, is better for your stomach. That's how I beat COVID, quite honestly. I just, I just <laughs> poured <laughs> alcohol on it. As many bush lights as I possibly could because... Wow. The bush apples or just bush no, lights? No, just regular bush lights. Oh. I figured I was just going to drown it. And, and Do you see the uh, bush apples are in tall boys now? Did you see they're this not going to make it anymore after this well, year? Why? Yeah, this is it. They Bush announced no more bush, bush light apple after this year. It's Until over. three years from now when they want to bring it back. <clears throat> exactly, when they want to bring it uh-huh. back. Well, what's the reason? I mean, I feel like it's doing so well. I feel well. like he's upset about it. He I, is mad. I am he's upset. noticed a little thing yeah. in yeah. his voice there. Yeah. What, yeah. what do you mean I can't get this? All, all they said was, all good things come to an end. And, that, <laughs> and that's what they said. Huh. Now, quite honestly, will they do like a Bush Light Citrus next year? I mean... They're going to do something different. They'll do something They're gonna different. They're going to try to push something different. Absolutely. Better not yeah. be watermelon. No, yes. please. They'll no. go with they'll go with another mainstream flavor. Okay, probably strawberry. Maybe they could do a bush light strawberry. Maybe I don't know. Apple was so groundbreaking. It Whatever, it's good. Whatever. <laughs> I tell you, you, you know what makes me happy? Don't here here. How about this? In post production, once you drop one of one of Stealing Ocean songs right in here. And then it hit me like golly, this whole life is but a dream, and now everything's coming up roses. Why did never cross my mind? It's been right here all this time, so I'm gonna stay here in the 
this moment and i'm gonna just uh, this was the this is the first time in over 200 episodes where brian said let's have another beer and we actually had another beer that's true i kind of like that <laughs> <laughs> I kind of like that. So if I say we're not going anywhere for a while again, are we going to have another beer after no. this? Well, well in, technically, in theory, yeah. yes, but not on the episode. Oh. Yeah, not on this episode. But we have another episode that we're going to record after this. Yeah, I think. Yeah. yeah. Well, so then we're not going anywhere for a while. Let's have some extra more beers <laughs> next week. Next week, <laughs> stay tuned to find out what those beers are and follow uh, Stealing Oceans. Yeah, listen to that song. Thank you for listening to A Beer with Atlas. Special thanks to our brand team for producing the show. Each episode of A Beer with Atlas is powered by Atlas Medstaff, an industry leader in travel healthcare staffing. <laughs> <laughs>